Example 2.8. In this example, we have a pressurized tank which contains oil with a specific gravity of 0.9. It also has a square bolted plate which has a cross-sectional area of 0.6 by 0.6 meters. And this is bolted to the side. The pressure gauge at the top of the tank reads 50 kilopascals and the outside of the tank has an atmospheric pressure. We need to determine the magnitude and the location of the resultant force of, that is applied on the attached plate. In order to evaluate this case, we're going to use the PRISM method. And the main reason is because the pressure that we have at the interface, it is not equal to zero. Therefore, the profile that we're going to have for the pressure, it is not going to be triangular. So we need to determine first what is the pressure at the top and the pressure at the bottom of the plate. So we're going to call it PT for pressure at the top, and that is going to be equal to P plus gamma of oil times the height between the interface and the top of the plate. And we're going to call this H1. This is going to be H1. Then if we replace, we're going to have 50 kilopascals plus 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cube and we multiply it by the specific gravity of oil which is 0.9 and then we multiply it by 2 meters. This is going to be equal to 67.64 kilopascals. If we do the same process we could find that the pressure at the bottom and we could calculate it either from pressure at the surface or from pressure at the top. So I'm going to just calculate it as P plus gamma of oil. And then I'm going to multiply by H1 plus H2. And notice that I'm going to call this H2. So this is going to be basically 2.6. So PV is going to be 50 kilopascals plus, once again, 9.8 kilonewtons per meter cubed and this is 0.9 for the specific gravity of the oil and the height is 2.6 meter. The value of this pressure is equal to 72.93 kilopascals. Let's now calculate the resultant force uh, we're using the prism method. We need to draw two things. One, the surface in which we're applying the pressure and also the pressure distribution. So we're gonna first draw the plate. So it's on a square. And we know that this is uh, 0.6 meters by uh, 0.6 meters, okay? The second thing that we're going to draw is the pressure distribution. So we know that at the top of the plate, we have a value of the pressure equivalent to PT, the pressure at the top, and we know that the pressure at the bottom is slightly larger and is PV. And we know also that there is a linear uh, description between PT and PV, so it's something like this. Once we have that, we realize that there are going to be two geometries in the pressure distribution. It is always going to be a triangle, or which we're going to have it as area one, and we're going to have a rectangle, which is going to be area two. Then we're going to calculate the volume of each one of the areas of these sections, and that is going to allow us to calculate the resultant force. Let's just start with section number one. If you see the section number one is the one that has a triangular cross-sectional area, and then we have a depth which is equal to a rectangle. So let's draw it again. So it's going to be the triangle and then the cross-sectional area, which should be the surface of the plate. So this is in terms of pressure, height, and height, and that is why we get Newtons. If we calculate the volume of this, that is going to be equal to the resultant force in that particular section. So let's calculate the volume. The volume is simply going to be the sectional area of the triangle, which is one half base times height times the depth, 
that we have in this ball. So the first thing that we need to calculate is what is this base. From the graph that we have over here, we notice that this base is equal to the pressure that we have at the bottom minus the pressure that we have at the top. So this is simply PB minus PT. So if we calculate the volume 1, which is exactly as the resultant force in number 1, and it's going to be 1 half base, which is PB minus PT, and times the height, which is 0.6 meters. And then we have, we multiply by the depth of this, which is equal to 0.6 meters. Please note that for the particular values that we have, the base that we calculate is going to be equal to 5.29 kilopascals. We enter all the information over here and we find that the resultant force for the triangular area, uh, cross-sectional area is going to be equal to 0.954 kilonewtons. Let's now calculate section number two, which is a box. So we simply have, this is the cross-sectional area, which is a rectangle. This length is PT. And once again, this is the cross-sectional area. Please note that for both cases, the cross-sectional area that we use has to be exactly the same. In this case, it's 0.6 times 0.6. So if we calculate the volume of this, surface so this is going to look better like this the volume 2 which is exactly f2 is going to be equal to pt times 0.6 meters so this is the cross-sectional area of this rectangle times the width which is going to be also 0.6 meters we calculate the values and we get that this force is going to be equal to 24.4 kilonewtons. Now we have the resultant forces of the two sections. We need to calculate the resultant force um, throughout the whole plate. That is simply going to be F1 plus F2. And for this case, is equal to 25.4 kilonewtons. Now we need to determine what is going to be the resultant location or the value of YR for the force. We need to do the same case for each one of the sections. We need to find that value for each one of the sections and then find it for the total geometry. So if we have a triangle, we know that the location of this is going to be at the location of the centroid which is located at one third from the base. So this distance over here is going to be 0.2 from the base. If it's 0.2 from the base, that means that from the surface to here, the value of Y1 is going to be equal to 2.4 meters. We do the same process for the second cross-sectional area. The second cross-sectional area is going to be a square this is going to be half, therefore this is going to be 0.3 meters. And then if we measure from the top all the way to here, that is going to give us that y2 is equal to 2.3 meters. Now to calculate the resultant uh, location, we simply use the formula FRYR is equal to F1Y1 plus F2, Y2. And that indicates that the value of Y2 is going to be equal to 2.31 meters. Please review the different methods used in this problem, mainly why we use the prism method rather than using the equation for either inclined or vertical surfaces that are submerged in a liquid. Please make sure that you understand how to select the different sections of the pressure distribution and how to calculate the resultant force in each one of them. Also how to calculate the 
location of the resultant force in each section, and then finally how to calculate the resultant force and the resultant location at the end of the old geometry. Please also notice that the book provides an alternative solution for this problem. Be able to understand both and understand the differences, advantages and disadvantages of each one of them.